Hear this late. Tim, what were you thinking leaving Harley in charge of your kids? Shane is crying his head off because he's so hungry, and Mara is still up at 10.30. Oh, and she told me about Dylan and Samantha, and you throwing car keys on the yard? Have you taken leave of your senses? Don't say that. Well, honey, what is it? Is it the kids? Now, I remember... What it's like to have three kids pulling you in all different directions. It, it can be real stressful. Now, maybe I, I should start coming over here more and, and helping you no, out more. No, no, I can take care of my own kids, thank you. All right. Then maybe you should tell me about what's going on with my grandson. Mara made it sound like you helped these kids to run away. And when I told her that you'd never do a thing like that, she started to cry and said that nobody believed her anymore. Well, now, why didn't you think that was true? I mean, what's so ridiculous about my wanting to help my son and his girlfriend? It's ridiculous because they're barely more than children. They have no idea what's ahead of them. Yeah, well, I'd expect you to say that. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Oh, Mama, it wasn't that long ago. In the kitchen back in Tulsa? I wanted to do the exact same thing Dylan's doing right now. But you told me I was crazy, that I wasn't thinking straight, and you're still singing that same old song. Reva Shane. No. Reva Shane Lewis. No thanks to you. Thank God Dylan doesn't have to go through the things I did. He has a mama who's on his side. Reva, how could you do it? How could I not? They love each other. But why didn't you tell me? Because you try to stop me. Just like you always have. Mama, don't look at me like that. Like what? I've just been stabbed in the back by my own daughter. Look, I didn't mean it that way. I know that you would do anything in the world for me. Well, thank you for anything noticing. Anything except, let me hope, that summer that Joshua left me, I needed to hope, but you wouldn't let me. You took every chance you could to tell me that things probably wouldn't work out for us, that Shane's don't end up marrying Lewis's. And you took great pains to prove me wrong on that score, didn't you? Several times. Oh, Mama, don't you get it? Hope was all I had back then. But you made me feel foolish, thinking, hoping that love would win out in the end. You made me think that the only smart thing to do was to scheme and manipulate. And all those years, I, I used people. I used myself. I didn't want to, but, it, but I thought that it was the only way I'd, I, I wouldn't end up alone. So? So it's all my fault. Some fancy head doctor tell you that? Oh, Mama, I know. Please. They always like to blame everything on the mamas. Well, you just wait. You just wait until Mara grows up and she starts blaming you. Oh, no, no, I'm not going to make the same mistakes with Mara that you made with me. No, you probably won't. You'll make other ones. Nobody gets off scot-free. Not even you, Reba. Oh, Mama, don't be mad. I'm not. And I don't want to hurt you. I just, I want Dylan to know that, that love is the most important thing in the world. Love and hope. Now, I know it, it's not the practical thing or the smart thing or, or the realistic thing, but it's true. When I first saw Joshua, until the day I said I do, I knew that I needed him if my life was going to have any meaning. And I was right back then. And all those years in between, that was a mistake. And I don't want Dylan to go through life making that kind of mistake. You 
and Joshua and Billy and Ross and, and that parole officer, you're all wrong. Dylan and Sam are right. And I pray to God that they are married now. And I'm, and, and I'm hoping that, they, that, that they're safe and they're sound in each other's arms right now. I'm sorry. I, I didn't want to hurt you. I, I shouldn't have said those things. Well, you never held back anything in your life. No point in starting now. I'm glad you finally understand. Oh. Just because I'm still here doesn't mean I agree with you. Honey, it's so easy to pretty things up in hindsight. Now, if you and Joshua hadn't gotten married back then, well, there's no guarantee that you'd still be together now. You would have had problems. Like your daddy and I did. Oh, there you go again. That cold, practical voice of reason. Mama, it was a love story. Joshua and I, we were a love story that should have lived happily ever after. Well, now we're finally getting our chance to. It's just that it, we had to wait so long for the end of the story. Honey, can I say one? cold, practical thing before I go. You don't get to just live happily ever after. The book doesn't close when you say I do. I know. Well, I hope you do. Because from where I'm sitting, you have forgotten a lot. What? Have you given one ounce of thought to what Joshua thinks about what you've done, buying that fancy sports car and, and helping the kids to run away. Joshua loves me. He'll, he'll support me. Did he say that? Not in so many words. Well, I didn't think so. Now, honey, I'm warning you. Loving you doesn't mean that a man has to take leave of his senses. Now, Rita, you got to shape up. Or you just might lose your precious Joshua. Come here. I guess we better go home to your daddy. Now you call me if you need anything. Uh -huh. Just might lose your precious Joshua. Your precious Joshua. Lose your precious Joshua. <laughs> <laughs>